Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is James and in this video I'm going to talk about the Revolutionary War and the parallels uh, What could happen, you know, was Scott Gimple thinking about this this entire thing here when he was writing the story for the ones who live We want to take a look at a few little details here and I want to edit in this little piece to the video because I've been working on it and I was reading through the comments and hey a shout out to at Aaron 83G Aaron 83G I don't know if he just really knows his history or he just heard what I said, just a quick little snippet in the funeral scene explained video. You guys should check that out. But I said it real quick in just one sentence in that video, but let's talk a little bit about the Revolutionary War. So one thing I want to say and get it out of the way, it's a fact and it's a question a lot of people have asked through the years, would America have won the Revolutionary War, defeated the British? If not for the French, no. Highly unlikely, probably not. Many people say a definite no. The Continental Army, under the leadership of George Washington, would not have been able to beat the British and thus would have lost the Revolutionary War. France didn't like the British and they didn't really care about the skirmish, but they just didn't like the British. And so they just wanted to like poke a little thorn into the British's side by saying, ha ha, we're going to help them. But they didn't want to help them initially. A guy from America by the name of Benjamin Franklin got on a ship and went over to France. And another little aspect of history, by the time Benjamin Franklin gets over to France, this is 1776, he's already a famous person, folk hero, whatever you want to call it. He's famous. People know him. I mean, so that's one thing. Him being a famous person added a lot of weight to asking the king, hey, please help us. Because at that time when he gets to France, when Benjamin Franklin gets to France, George Washington's Continental Army was losing. And the French king didn't say, yeah, I'm going to help. He said no. So Ben had to just stay over there. He was waiting. Benjamin Franklin was just really waiting for the war to get better if we can win a few battles you know if we can just do a little bit better and show that we can do this they'll get behind us so if you did see the funeral video that i did i explained it about how the guy that major general bill is talking about he's holding the saber that was this guy's he was a scottish guy his name was hugh mercer but hugh mercer's death kind of helped ignite a little fire in Washington and and the men and is like look come on now let's fight these dudes and so it kind of lit a fire and got them to start winning some stuff so there were the battles of Trenton Princeton and those battles we were winning and kind of things were getting better and it, it was a push not necessarily 100% just Hugh Mercer dying and all that happened around that but that was a big thing. That was a big thing that got George Washington and the men to go, let's go. Well, then they went on to the Battle of Princeton and won, and then to the Battle of Saratoga. And that's the battle that they say is the tipping point. We did get French help. We got even more French help. And it went on to being able to defeat the British at Yorktown. And without the French Navy involved as well, we had, they had troops on the land with Washington. But without the Navy as well, we would not have been able to win but that made Yorktown a decisive victory not just for that battle but for the war so it was 1781 when Cornwallis surrendered at Yorktown his troops marched through a corridor formed by the victorious forces on one side were the Americans and on the other side stood the French so America won the Revolutionary War they wouldn't have been able to without France and they wouldn't have been able to without a guy going over there and getting help now, if you want to start paralleling stuff like uh, Aaron83G did in his comment, he, he was putting two and two together. Daryl didn't specifically go over to France to get their help to fight CRM, but we've got a guy in France. We've got a guy in France. And he could come and help whatever's going on in America, help us win, if that story plays out that far. Rick is the George Washington in that story to rally the troops. So... I mean, you know, you could parallel this stuff together and, and put your own little theories around that. But it seems very, very obvious that Scott Gimple may be referencing the Revolutionary War because America, you could almost say, is fighting for that again. Like, 
Rick being the George Washington, the real America, per se, fighting against Major General Bill, the oppressor. And will he need help from France, his guy in France, Daryl? How will this all work out? Why is it so seemingly parallel and close? I don't know. But I'd love to hear your thoughts about it down in the comments below. And you know I'll join you there. This is James and Nash. As always, thanks for watching. And stay tuned for more dead stuff.